For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. Every week on Simply Nitin, I bring you nuggets from recent history, either military history, political history, or social history of India and the subcontinent. This week, I want to talk about the most successful accord in India's recent history, a political accord between an insurgent group and the government of India, the Mizo Accord signed on 30th of June, 1986. That's the topic of Simply Nitin this week. I'm Nitin Gokhale. So before I tell you the story of the Mizoram Accord, it is important to understand how the insurgency originated in Lushai Hills district, now the state of Mizoram, in February 1966. In fact, it goes back to 1959-1960, when a phenomenon that occurs every 48 years started in the Lushai Hills district called Motam. Motam is famine in Mizo language. Now, during that famine, the bamboo plant starts flowering. Bamboo plants normally don't get flowers, but every 48 years, they start getting these flowers. These flowers are very sweet. They're very delicious uh, smelling flowers. And the flowers attract rodents and insects in large numbers. The rats start eating the flowers. And once they have finished devouring the flowers, they start attacking everything else inside. Grains, crops, uh, food that is stored. And that uh, led to starvation, uh, led to shortage of food in the Lushai Hills district. People started starving and dying because of starvation. The government of Assam, which was then headquartered, the undivided Assam was headquartered in Shillong, did not pay attention to what was happening in the Lushai Hills district, which was a distant district, no road connectivity, a kacha road leading to Aizawl, the district headquarters, from the nearest uh, town in Assam called Silchar. And therefore, uh, many people died because of lack of attention, lack, lack of uh, attention and lack of uh, food, uh, which the government did not provide. So, some uh, educated and well-meaning Mizos got together and formed an organization called Mizo National Famine Front, MNFF. They started giving them uh, some help, some money, some food brought from uh, Assam with great difficulty. And the next year in 62-63, the founder of MNFF, Lal Denga, who was a former soldier in the Indian Army, uh, had taken voluntary retirement, converted MNFF into a political party or a political organization called Mizo National Front. Now, they started uh, raising their voice against the government of Assam and of course, government of India, but nothing happened. So on uh, 1st February 1966, the Mizo National Front, which had already created another front organization called Mizo National Army, started attacking police stations, government installations, government offices, treasuries, and even Assam Rifles posts at various places in the district. Aizol, the district headquarter, had the first Assam Rifles unit posted in Aizol. Only the first Assam Rifles uh, post or the headquarter was left to be overrun by the rebels who had got uh, small arms. Uh, they had sourced it from East Pakistan, from others. And uh, they almost overran the entire government machinery and took control of the district. That time it wasn't a state. Enraged by the rebellion, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, who had just taken over as Prime Minister, sent the army to take control of the rebellion, to bring it under control, and also first and the only time in independent India's history, sent the Indian Air Force to bomb its own population. So, Aizol and other smaller areas uh, nearby were bombed by Indian Air Force planes. And uh, this remains, hopefully, uh, in the future too, there will be no such occasion. This, this remains the only occasion when the Indian Air Force has bombed uh, its own population and has carried out missions within the boundaries of India. Of course, uh, this left 
uh, a lot of scars which uh, remained with the people of Mizoram for a long time, for decades. Sometimes it sort of comes up uh, in discussions even now, after so many years. And interestingly, one of the pilots uh, of that bombing mission was Rajesh Pilot, who later became a politician and a minister of state for internal security and of course died in an unfortunate road accident. His son, uh, all of you are familiar with Sachin Pilot. He was uh, a transport pilot uh, in the Indian Air Force that time. And interestingly, his navigator was another famous or infamous personality, depending on how you see it, Suresh Kalmadi who was also an Indian Air Force pilot at that point in time. Later, of course, they both joined politics and became famous and infamous in their own ways. But coming back to the main story. So when the insurgency broke out, army was sent in, Air Force went and uh, strafed the, uh, the uh, urban areas. And then for the next 20 years, the insurgency went on. All the top leaders of MNA and MNF fled Mizoram or fled Lushai Hills, went into East Pakistan. From there, they went to West Pakistan. Of course, Pakistan was willingly helping them. And uh, Lal Denga took uh, asylum in London. Uh, it was only around uh, 1980s, early 1980s, that uh, the real contact between the government of India and the Mizoram National Front or the Mizo National Front took place. And they started talking about a negotiated settlement. It took almost three or four years to come to some kind of an understanding and a common ground to accept terms for each other. The government of India was not willing to give them independence or a separate country, obviously. The government of India's only red line was that everything should be within the constitution of India. And uh, Mizos wanted special category state. They wanted uh, all criminal charges against the Mizo uh, National Army members uh, completely dropped. So. The uh, two sides came to an agreement and Lal Denga uh, kept on discussing the matter with then Union Home Secretary R.D. Pradhan, who was uh, incidentally retiring on 30th of June 1986. Till about 6 p.m. that evening, uh, they couldn't come to an understanding, a final understanding. And uh, around 7 o'clock, Lal Denga again walked back into R.D. Pradhan's office in New Delhi, uh, New Delhi's North Block, and uh, said, okay, uh, we are now agreeing to whatever you have said, let's sign the accord. So Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, who had become Prime Minister by that time because his mother was assassinated uh, on 31st October 1984 by Sikh militants in Delhi, extended the services of then Union Home Secretary R.D. Pradhan till midnight that night so that the accord could be signed by R.D. Pradhan, Lal Denga, Chief Secretary of Mizoram, Lal Khama, uh, and of course, then they could clinch the accord. So, the accord was announced at 9.30 that evening on 30th of June, the last working day of then Union Home Secretary R.D. Pradhan. Uh, as I said, all these uh, terms were agreed upon. Uh, so, there is this famous photograph of all of them signing this accord. And then, of course, within 15-20 days, all the 750 or 800 rebels came over ground in Mizoram. Then Rajiv Gandhi made a very uh, famous trip to Mizoram that time, uh, driving around in open jeep, driving himself. Uh, Sonia Gandhi uh, was wearing the local Mizo dress. All that became a very big event. I was a young reporter, three years into the profession. And uh, my first, incidentally, my first uh, assignment outside Guwahati, where I was uh, working for the newspaper called The Sentinel, was in January 1984 to Aizol uh, in Mizoram. So Mizoram was by then, by 1986, July 1986, was a familiar territory for me. So I happened to be there when Lal Denga also arrived there. And there is a photograph you will see. I am uh, there talking to him. I am holding a, a small tape recorder uh, to record what he was saying. And there are other journalists from the Northeast, some of my old friends, some who have retired from journalism, they were also part of that photograph that you will see. Uh, so, of course, it became a big event. And uh, Lal Thaan Havla, who was then the Chief Minister of Mizoram Congress Party's Lal Thaan Havla, willingly stepped down because he wanted this accord to succeed. Uh, Rajiv Gandhi had assured him that he will be rehabilitated politically. Uh, and very graciously, he stepped down. Lal Denga became a Chief Minister without being elected uh, or uh, facing an election. 
for the six, seven months that that is allowed under the Indian constitution. Then elections happened and uh, he got elected. His party swept to power, the Mizo National Front. And of course, Lal Denga became uh, the uh, chief minister of Mizoram legitimately. There is an interesting fact uh, that again needs to be emphasized that the next chief minister from uh, MNF after Lal Denga passed away was Zoram Thanga. Now, Zoram Thanga was uh, one of the top commanders of uh, Mizo National Army. So his journey is very interesting from a rebel leader, a militant leader, an insurgent leader to chief minister of an Indian state. Currently also Zoram Thanga is the chief minister of Mizoram. In fact, uh, he is coming up with his autobiography, uh, talking about uh, the entire journey, which is very interesting. And I said at the beginning of the program that this was the most successful accord. Why do I say that? Because around that time when Rajiv Gandhi was prime minister, several accords were signed. Not all of those accords were fully implemented to the satisfaction of the parties involved or the people involved there. There was uh, the Punjab Accord with Rajiv Gandhi, between Rajiv Gandhi and Longowal. Uh, there was uh, the Gorkhaland Accord, there was the Assam Accord, there was the Sri Lanka Accord. Uh, and then, then there was, of course, the Mizo Accord. All of them uh, were not successfully implemented except for the Mizo Accord. All 750 to 800 rebels came over ground, laid down their arms, gave up violence and insurgency, and they were rehabilitated. All the other terms and conditions were fulfilled both by the state government as well as the central government. And today, when you look back 35 years later, many of those protagonists will tell you that most of these uh, terms and conditions were fulfilled. And this remains a shining example of how accommodation between rival parties, between contesting parties uh, is possible under the Indian constitution and how uh, negotiations take place. Of course, there are some lingering issues which will always remain, but there are some of the uh, people who helped me during that time are still there. My friend L.R. Silo, who is a very prominent figure, a chronicler of uh, recent history of Mizoram, has so many tales to uh, share, so many photographs to share. Some of the photographs you see on this program are taken by him during uh, Rajiv Gandhi's visit in 1986 in July 1986 and of course uh, he is now the uh, center director of the Indian Institute of Mass Communication uh, Center in Aizol where he teaches journalism, PR and uh, television and uh, story writing to uh, students who get admitted into that course there. So LR Silo remains a central figure. He was my first interlocutor or first point of contact when I went there in January 1984 and of course he's worked with all the chief ministers uh, since then, Lal Thanhaula, Zoram Thanga, Lal Denga, even Brigadier T. Silo. There's a delicious story, I would tell you sometime, uh, how uh, then Chief Minister Brigadier T. Silo uh, actually asked me to go and read up the history of uh, Mizoram before I could interview him as a 22-year-old 22, 22 uh, budding journalist. But that's a different story. And there is another backstory which we'll keep it for some other episode where current National Security Advisor Ajit Doval played a major part in propelling the rebels and the government of India in one direction uh, between 1976 and 1986 for a decade to uh, come to an understanding uh, after the insurgency uh, was uh, flourishing there in Mizoram since 1966. That's a story for another day as I mentioned. But Mizoram Accord must be remembered as one of the most successful or the most successful accord in re India's recent history. And that's why I thought I'll just flag this for you. Uh, of course, you can read it up on uh, the internet. There are other people who have uh, chronicled it, who have written books on it. Uh, but uh, I don't know whether that book is available anymore or not. If you want to understand the insurgency in Mizoram, there is a uh, book by a then journalist uh, Nirbal Nibedan called The Dagger Brigade. It talks about the MNA and its activities uh, both uh, in Mizoram, in East Pakistan, during 1971 war and later. That's all I have this week. But of course, you will know uh, every week we will come back with uh, more such interesting anecdotes and uh, parts of recent history of India. And uh, of course, bring you uh, as many details as possible. Do keep giving us feedback and um, your comments. And of course, you know where to reach us. Uh, through our social media websites, uh, social media handles, 
our website as well as the YouTube channel that you are watching this on. Until the next time, it's goodbye.